You know what Google Translate should do? It should do RNA translation. It would make my life so much easier as a science teacher. But I digress. All right, this is Norris Teach Science, and this is another edition of my biology lectures. I am Mr. Norris, and today I present RNA translation, kind of like what I just mentioned. Just a heads up, Google Translate does not do RNA translation. Do not try to figure that out. You're going to have to do this on your own students. All right, in this video, your goal is I can describe the process of translation, RNA translation, including how it relates to RNA and transcription. Hopefully by now you have watched the DNA structure replication video, the RNA video, the DNA transcription video, and you are now on RNA translation, the second part of protein synthesis. So let's first start off with what is DNA translation? It is the process that converts an mRNA message into a protein chain known as a peptide polypeptides or polypeptide chain. All right, so we're going to take the information that's in the DNA that we now have turned it into RNA. We're going to turn it into the actual protein. When and where does translation happen? Well, first off, translation happens after transcription. After transcription, you've got to get the RNA strand first before you can translate it. And translation is going to happen at the ribosome or the rRNA. Why does translation happen? Well, translation happens so that proteins can be made from the message sent from in the form of the mRNA. The whole purpose of this is to make the proteins, you know, the proteins that make you who you are. I keep saying proteins determine your eye color, your hair color. Your proteins determine everything about you, including why your voice sounds the way it does, why you're that tall, why you have hazel eyes and brown hair, and why your name is Mr. Norris. All right, I digress too much about me. Let's go forward. Why does translation happen? I just cover that. So let's talk about something important with this. It's called a codon. A codon is important because we're going to take the mRNA and break it into these codons. These codons are three set, three bases that code for amino acid. It's three consecutive bases that code for a certain amino acid. Does anyone remember how many amino acids there are? There's 20. Go back. You guys need to watch that video again. All right. Amino acids code for our traits when they link together to form our proteins. And to understand this, we're going to use a codon chart to look at the mRNAs and figure out what um, amino acid it is. Speaking of codon chart, here's the one I use in my class. You may have a separate one in your class. They come in different forms, but this is my mRNA codon amino acid chart. So how this chart works, we have this first codon, A, C, G. And this is an mRNA thing. On the left side, you see first base. At the top, you see second base. And on the right side, you see third base. You do it in that order. So first thing you do is you're going to look for the first base. My first base is A. So here's A. So somewhere with all the ones that start with A are going to be the amino acid I need. The next one is C. I look up here at the top for the second base, and it's C. So if I look, the C and the A intersect in this box of four um, different codons. Then I need to get the last one, which is G. So I look to the right from this box I have identified and find the G and come over. With the three intersect, A, C, G, I find out that my amino acid is THR. T-H-R. All right, so the next one, I'm going to pull out the highlighter so you guys can see a little bit about this. All right, the next one is UCC. So I find the first one, U, and it's right here. And the next one is C, right here. All right, so they intersect in this box. And then I'm going to look to the side and find C, come over, and here it is right here. 
and I find out that that's sir, S-E-R. And so that is the amino acid. All right, I want you to pause this video real quick, and I want you to try the last two on your own. Hint, the last one's a trick. All right, I think I gave you enough time if you pause the video. Let's go forward. So we have, the, we have A, U, G. We have A, we have U, and we have G. They intersect right here at AUG, and it's MET. And the la the next one is A U A A. So U A A. They intersect right here at U A A, and it's a stop. There are three stop codons, and they actually stop the process. So. If you need some more help, just try rewind the video a little bit, um, ask your teacher. But we're going to continue on because we're going to go through the process now. So translation, step one, the mRNA and the tRNA that has the first amino acid in the, in the two ribosomal subunits joined together. All protein synthesis, all translations are going to usually start, usually start in the cell. Um, with the start codon AUG, which we abbreviate MET, um, for the amino acid. I'm not going to try to say that amino acid because I will butcher it like there's no tomorrow. But that's the first one inside the cell. Now, when you do practice, it may not start with AUG, but um, just know that most times it is AUG when you start. After that, amino acids are brought in one at a time as it starts to read the codons. The amino acids are linked together um, and as one, with a peptide bond, and as one amino acid, a new one comes in, the lot other tRNA is taken out to go find another amino acid that it would bring, and the process just keeps going and going and going. It keeps going to the tRNA at the end um, until you start to reach that stop codon. And the peptide bond just keeps getting longer and longer and longer until you reach the stop codon. So the last thing is the stop codon. Remember, there are three stop codons, A, UAA, UAG, or UGA. When one of those are reached, the whole process stops. The protein stops becoming longer and longer, and the protein chain is free. It's, but this protein's in its raw form, so it's not ready to be used. So what happens next is the protein is sent to the Golgi body or Golgi apparatus. There it is modified so that it can be functional, or like I call it, it's refined, kind of like an oil refinery. And so it's refined and then sent to where it needs to be in the cell. But let's do a little practice here. So I have a DNA strain, and we're going to do the whole process here. The first thing that we need to do from DNA is we need to turn into mRNA. If you remember, T's go to A, A's go to U, C goes to G, and G goes to C. So if we look here, it goes A, A, C, A, A, C, G, U, G. So... Then we're going to break it down so we can see our codons. How many bases are in a codon? Three. So I go one, two, three, and I do a line down. One, two, three, line down. One, two, three, there's nothing left, so I'm not going to draw a line. Then I take my mRNA, and I'm going to use the codon chart to figure out what the amino acid is. So the first base is A, second base is A, third base is C, they intersect right here at AAC, and that's ASN. All right, next one, AAC. Oh, wait, didn't we just do that? It's ASN. And you link them with a little um, dash. And we got one more, G U G. So we have G. We have U, they intersected this box here, and then we look for um, the GUG, it's right here, and that's Val, 
and the last amino acid is val. And that's the process of protein synthesis from transcription to translation. Now, I suggest you go find some worksheets, do a little practice with this, um, but this is the process of protein synthesis. And there's a lot more out there about protein synthesis. I suggest you go over to Google and um, Google it, look up a little more. But I, like I always say, I hope you learned something. And this is Mr. Norris, and I'll see you in the next video.